All right, welcome to another deep dive. Um, today we're going to be uh, exploring a conversation between Christian, Touré, and a third person. And this one's all about success. Mindset. Mindset, yeah. yeah. Cultural philosophy, all that. It sounds great. Get ready for some some sparks to fly here. Oh, yeah. These guys don't hold back on the strong opinions. It's interesting how they jump right into a debate about the impact of history. Oh, yeah. Specifically on the black community today. Yeah. You can almost feel the tension as they wrestle with this weighty topic. Yeah, and right away, Tory, I mean, he advocates for this very forward-looking approach. Right. You know, he argues that dwelling on past oppression... It can almost cultivate a victim mentality and actually hinder progress. Mm -hmm. He's much more about seizing present opportunities, you right. know, building a brighter future. That's right. And his perspective really aligns with the bootstrap mentality. Yeah. It's all about individual agency responsibility and the power to shape your own destiny. But Christian brings a powerful counterpoint to that. Right. Emphasizing that acknowledging the past and its lasting effects, like that's crucial. Yeah. He even talks about how he relates to the struggles of his ancestors personally. It's a powerful point. Yes. It really is. It makes you wonder, is recognizing historical oppression, is that empowering or debilitating? Yeah. I mean, does it fuel a sense of injustice or does it, you know, help you understand the challenges people face today? Right. You know. It's a complex question with no easy answers. Yeah. But that leads us to another point of debate that they touch on, and that is the relative importance of education versus wealth for achieving success. Yes. Um, and both of them, both Christian and Touré, acknowledge that financial resources, it gives you an advantage, an yeah. undeniable advantage. Yeah. But Christian, he seems to believe that education, it has a really unique power. Absolutely. He argues that it provides, you know, skills and knowledge. Right. That can't be taken away. You can't take those things from you. Right. Like unlike material possessions. Right, right. And it empowers you with the tools that can help you rebuild, even if you face setbacks mm -hmm. and potentially even surpass, you know, the achievements of previous generations. And then Toure, he brings in his personal experience to kind of illustrate this point. Yeah. He talks about his family. Resources were limited growing up, so his parents decided to strategically invest in the education of the child that they believed had the most potential. Right. Um, That's powerful. It's an example of how education can be a pathway to upward mobility, even when you're starting with very little. Yeah. But it raises a really crucial question, yeah. and this is for you. Can education truly level the playing field? Right. Or are there barriers that it can't overcome? Yeah, it's it's a question worth pondering for Ooh, sure. Absolutely. It feels like we're just scratching the surface here. And these guys, I love it, they don't shy away from tough questions. Absolutely. And speaking of challenging topics, the conversation takes a turn as they delve into the power of mindset. Right. Um, specifically, the balance between mental strength and emotional control. Yes, Tory, huge advocate for logic and unemotional decision making. <laughs> he contrasts his son's his son's more logical and detached approach with his own past. Mm -hmm. He admits that you know he le his emotions lead him to some mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like he's saying, "Hey, be careful." You know, yeah. don't let your feelings cloud your judgment. Right, right. It sounds like he admires those who can detach from their emotions and make rational choices. You know, choices based on facts and analysis. But Christian pushes back a little bit. Yes, he does. He reminds us that emotion isn't always a negative force. Right. So, I mean, think of all the art, music, literature that's been born out of intense emotion. So much. He's not, he's not advocating for purely emotional decision making. Right. But he believes there's an ideal... In striking a balance yes. between logic and feeling. It's a classic debate. It is. It makes me think about the different paths to success we see in the world. You know, you have artists creating masterpieces driven by raw emotion. Mm, right. And you have these brilliant business leaders making these calculated, data-driven decisions. Right. Both can achieve incredible things, but they go about it very differently. It's a fascinating contrast. Yeah. It makes me wonder, what kind of success DNA do I have? I know, right? Am I more drawn to logic and analysis? Yeah. Or am I fueled by passion and intuition? Right. Maybe it's a mix of both. Maybe. What about you? 
Oh, that is a great question. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something to think about. Yeah, and yeah. and this whole exploration of mindset kind of sets the stage for a deep old dive into some philosophical territory. Oh, here we go. Christian and Touré, they start exploring masculine and feminine energy. Yeah. Um, this is where things get interesting. Yes. Touré, he dropped kind of a bombshell here with this critique of Western culture. He does. He argues that Western culture has become overly feminine. Oh, boy prioritizing emotions over action and structure. Mm. Um, and he even contrasts this with historical examples of what he calls, you know, masculine energy, driving empires, building and conquest. Bold statement. It is. And yeah. then Christian brings it down to a personal level. Right. Referencing the dynamic between him and his wife. Yeah. He's kind of exploring how these energies play out in a very practical way. Right. Touré goes on to clarify, though, that he's not saying one energy is better than the other. Yeah. He believes in a balance yeah. between masculine and feminine energies. Okay. All right. And then he even brings in some Eastern philosophy to illustrate this. Okay. He's talking about chakras. Okay. Yogic principles, things like that. For those who don't know, just, just really quick. Yeah, of course. Chakras, these are energy centers in the body. Right. Um, according to you know, yogic traditions, and they're associated with different qualities and aspects of our being. Right. To Ray, he seems to be suggesting that these energies, masculine and feminine, okay, these are fundamental to our nature. Yeah. And finding a balance between them, that's essential for well-being. I see. It's, it's a really intriguing way to look at things. Yeah. Do you agree with his assessment of Western culture? Mm. How do these energies play out in your own life? Right. Your relationships? I don't know. It's something to think about for sure. Definitely. As we continue to to unpack this conversation. Yeah. And it's fascinating how they weave these philosophical concepts into personal experiences, you know? Yeah. They shift gears a bit and start talking about navigating family dynamics, especially when you have loved ones who hold very different values. Oh, yeah. Or mindsets. Oh, this is so relatable. Yeah. Who hasn't run into a few challenges in their own family? Right. I know I have. Toure talks about how he's learned to kind of detach from negative family dynamics mm -hmm. without completely cutting people off. Right. It sounds like he's found a way to set boundaries, you know, to protect his own well-being. Right. But still maintain those family connections. It's a delicate balance. Oh, for sure. And Christian shares his own experience, too, reflecting on how he reacted to some family members during a period of intense grief. Yeah, it's a raw moment in the conversation, for yeah. sure. Yeah. It really highlights how complex family relationships can be you know, especially when you're dealing with strong emotions or just navigating different viewpoints. And it, m it makes you think, how do you handle these situations in your own life? Mm. How do you maintain relationships with loved ones who maybe hold different beliefs or exhibit challenging behaviors? It's a question we all grapple with. At some point. At some point, right? Yeah. And then they shift gears again and start talking about staying grounded in the midst of chaos and uncertainty. Oh, yeah. Which is so relevant. So relevant right now. Toure uses COVID-19 as an example. Yeah. You know, he emphasizes the importance of cultivating inner stability, mm -hmm. even when the world feels like it's spinning out of control. Right. He uses this great analogy. Yeah. He compares it to the rudder of a ship. Well, yeah. He's saying that while it's necessary to adjust and respond to those external changes, yeah. you need that inner compass, that emotional resilience right. to stay on course. It's a powerful image. Yes. Christian totally agrees. And he talks about how at the beginning of the pandemic, he was afraid, mm -hmm. uncertain. Yeah. But eventually he was able to adapt his business. Right. You know, find new solutions. Find a new way. Navigate those uncharted waters. Exactly. They both learned that having that inner stability, that ability to stay calm and focused yeah. in a crisis is essential. Yeah. And yeah. in a world that's constantly changing, throwing these curveballs at us all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a skill we could all benefit from. We could all use a little more of that. Absolutely. It's like there's you can weather any storm. Yeah. You've got that inner compass guiding you. It's true. It's amazing how they how they found their ways to kind of navigate that time, you know. And as the conversation kind of comes to a close, yeah. they can't resist making some predictions. Oh, here we go. Particularly about the upcoming presidential election. Right. This is where Torah's insights get really interesting. OK. He seems convinced that Trump is going to win another term. Wow. Citing people's desire for stability amidst all the chaos 
yeah. and uncertainty we've been going through. Right. He draws parallels to historical patterns, yeah. suggesting that during times of crisis, mm -hmm. people tend to gravitate towards strong and decisive leadership. I see. It's like it's almost like when people feel insecure or afraid. Yeah. They're going to prioritize that sense of security. Right. Even if it means overlooking some flaws or controversies, maybe. Potentially. Yeah. Interesting. Makes you think of, it does. about the psychology of it all. It does. Yeah. But Christian, he's not so sure. Yeah. He thinks that Trump's actions over the past few years <laughs> could actually push voters in the other direction. Right, right. You know, towards the opposition. It really highlights the unpredictable nature of politics. Yeah. Especially in such a polarized climate. Especially now. It's a good reminder that there are multiple perspectives and interpretations. Absolutely. And predicting the future is never an exact science. Never. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. We will. What an incredible deep dive this has yeah, been. Yeah, it has been. It's amazing how just one conversation can spark so many ideas. Yeah, so many insights. What stands out to me is is this emphasis on self-awareness. Yes. And critical thinking. Right. And choosing who we identify with in a world with so many different perspectives. It's not about following blindly. Right. You know, it's about creating your own path based on knowledge, yeah. introspection, and a willingness to engage with different points of view. Beautifully said. Well, thanks for joining us for this deep dive into success, mindset, cultural influences, all that. Of course. We hope it gave you some food for thought. Maybe even inspired you to have some deep conversations of your own. Yes. Until next time.